to be playing Sega Genesis with bros Now I'm gaming with some folks on the other side of the globe Used to go through a label if you trying to blow Now people got more Welcome to 3 Count Commentaries This is your host Mongo Slade Today we'll be talking about Impact Wrestling from March the 10th, 2021 But first, news and notes There's a lot of signings and re-signings and all sorts of stuff So um, as we noted last week, Josh Alexander has re-signed with Impact Wrestling That's good uh, Eddie Edwards has also re-signed with Impact Wrestling um, It's not like anybody else wanted him I mean, where else was he going to go? I'm just going to leave that question out there. <laughs> Where else was he going to go? Um, they rehired Christy Hemme. So Christy Hemme is working on uh, backstage production and branding. Branding. They keep hiring these women for these branding roles. Like, what, is this, what does that mean? What is her job exactly? Now, I think that she was basically just hired because she's friends with Gail Kim. And Gail Kim is a is a feminist and wants more women in the office, so it's like, oh, we'll just create a job and give it to my friend. It's not like they hire some random woman off the street who might actually know a thing about branding. And I'm not saying that Kristen Hemi doesn't know anything. I'm saying it's just very uh, how fortuitous that they have a branding job now and she gets it to her friend. Hmm. Uh, and Jake Something is now a free agent, and what is quite possibly one of the stupidest things Impact Wrestling has ever done is letting. Jake something go. Another note note is that Rhino says he wants to wrestle another five years before he transitions to being a producer. And I don't think we could take another five years of Rhino. I don't think anyone could take another five years of Rhino. I think he should rethink that and just transition himself to being a producer today. Like right now. Like this moment. Like instantly. Right? A like moment he said that, somebody should have been like, you know what? Let's just get you a nice, good pair of jeans, some khakis even. Get you a nice polo shirt with an impact l l label on it. And we're just going to give you this clipboard. And you just go, over, it's going to be your office over here. All the boys will come, to, you'll, still, you'll still see them. They'll come talk to you about their match. You know, you could direct some cameras, anything but get in the ring. You've been doing the same thing for 22 years. People are kind of tired of seeing you. You got Big Show Heat with a top wrestling podcaster named Mongo Slade. Nobody wants to deal with that. Just go sit over here. Just go chill out. We, we, we'll we find somebody else to replace you. Okay? All right. Maybe Taurus, for instance, can finally get, get over and do something different. All right. So that's all the news and notes from Impact. Uh, Jan Pack Show. Jan Pack Show, I guess. All right. We start the show with a... A dueling promo between two people who should not be having dueling promos. That's being Josh Alexander and Eddie Edwards. So first, Josh Alexander talked about how um, it was legit. He didn't know whether he was actually going to get his revenge on Moose and ever hold the Impact World title again. But he looked at his son and he says, that he, how can he teach his son to give up and all this kind of stuff? And he wants to be the champion again for his son and his family and all that. Eddie Edwards came out there, um, then said that uh, the fans will turn on you like they turned on me. And uh, guys like you are handed everything in Impact. Uh, Josh Alexander, obviously, like everybody, was pretty confused. It was like, wait a minute. Josh Alexander started out as a tag team guy, just like Eddie Edwards did. Um, and actually, people actually liked uh, Ethan Page more than Josh Alexander. I can't really tell from the Wolves because it wasn't until, you know, they broke up and then one of them went and threw himself into the negative zone for like 10 years. And I even realized whichever one of them was Eddie Edwards. I mean, you talk about two bland dudes. Anyway, uh, Josh Alexander told uh, Eddie Edwards that he had a shot at turning point. And he came up short and that he went from being Mr. Anything is possible to making excuses. Uh, they got into an argument. Matt Taven got involved. <laughs> Matt Taven said that Eddie Edwards was a former Ring of Honor World Champion and a former Impact World Champion. And that uh, Josh Alexander, the only thing that they have in common is that he doesn't come up short with his wife watching. And uh, Josh, Josh Alexander says, oh yeah, you are a Ring of Honor World Champion, talking to Matt Taven. And saying the difference between us is that when you were the World Champion, you put the company out of business. And that was a nice little burn. Uh... A fight ensued between Honor No More and Team Impact. They got into a bit of a scrum. Uh, Scott Demore came out there and said Honor No More is banned all night. Um, and that there was going to be the first match was going to be Kenny King versus Willie Mack. Um, so that was all fine. You know, um, 
it, it really builds into this Eddie Edwards, Josh Alexander thing, which is a big match for fans of Impact. You know, it really kind of is. If you're a pretty loyal Impact wrestling fan, this could be a pretty big match, this Eddie Edwards versus uh, Josh Alexander thing. And I think they should save it for a title match, which is what they seem to be doing. All right, so Kenny King and, and Willie Mack wrestled for what seemed like forever. Um, as much as I like Kenny King, he is not being utilized the best in this Honor No More thing. In fact, none of them are. They all just kind of basically background eyes. They've all just kind of melded into one. It's like, that's how bad factions are. When you kind of mix everybody together and it doesn't matter who is talking and who is doing what, it always seems like nobody stands out. They just, they all look different. They all may move different, but they're all just one. Like he could have beat anybody from Honor No More at this point. It didn't have to be Kenny King. It didn't feel like he was wrestling Kenny King. Um, and Willie Mack wins clean. I'm like, well, I don't remember the last time Willie Mack even won a match, let alone won a match clean. And he beat Kenny King. Oh, well. Uh, Scott Demore was then accosted by Moose, who says that, uh, Josh Alexander went over his head and behind his back to get a contract and a title shot and that he should be upset about that. Scott Demore says that, uh, Josh Alexander lives about a mile away from Anthem headquarters and when he came there, he met with him and he says that, well, I got his side of this contract now, I'm just looking for yours. And that. And so Moose says, oh, what about the, the big in-ring contract signing? Don't you want that? And Scott Demore was like, no, we don't really need it. And besides, if I was you, I wouldn't want to be in the same ring with Josh Alexander. So <laughs> that was pretty funny. Later, we could we get a lot of Scott Demore on every episode now. For Christ, Christ's sake, we get a lot of Scott Demore. Later, Scott Demore is uh, talking to Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander says, all right. I want Eddie Edwards. You saw that. You saw the promo out there. All the stuff he said to me. I want to fight Eddie Edwards. Scott Demore was like, "Look, you just got back. You should focus on being the world champion. And you just got jumped by six guys." And he's like, "Nope, nope. I'm focused. I want to be world champion, but I also want to fight Eddie Edwards. So you got to give me Eddie Edwards." And Scott Demore was like, "Uh, new. I'll give you Matt Taven instead next week. And then after that, I want you to focus on the world title." So how weird is this now? Earlier this year, it was all Scott Demore could do to keep Josh Alexander away from the world title. He wanted them to focus on literally anything else. And now he's telling them, okay, I want you to focus on the world title. It's like, why is this guy purposefully directing just Josh Alexander around like this? Why does he give a shit whether Josh Alexander is focused or not? Why does he care? We, I, I, I get it that, uh, they have such history together and he's, he signed him and all that kind of stuff. I get that. But at some point, you gotta say that like Josh, uh, Scott Demore is way too hands on with the career of Josh Alexander. And we kinda need to separate this. You know, maybe they need to have a conversation, you know, about this kind of thing. Because, uh, there's a little too much of that. Uh, the main event was more honor no more stuff as Eddie Edwards defeated Rich Swan in a match that felt like he was going on forever. Um, look at Eddie Edwards' arms, please. Check out his arms, please. The lack of definition. In his arms. Um, you would, <laughs> this is why I say, like, who else would want him? He's clearly out of shape. And that's why he's wrestling in a t shirt. And it's just, it's not, it hasn't been good. You know, I would think that when he turned heel, um, he would change, especially since it's a big heel turn, it's big for the company. Something would change. You know, like his look would change, his, uh, his attitude would change. I mean, we got to change an attitude. We didn't get to change a look. He's still carrying the fucking kendo stick. You know, how about adopting a more Ring of Honor themed char characteristic? You know, and I'm not saying he should cut his hair or something like that, but, you know, something that, you know, is symbolizing that there is a deep change in Eddie Edwards and not just, oh, he's a heel now. He's still going to do all the same crap he was doing wrestling in gym shoes. And, you know, I think he's wearing tights now. He's not wearing shorts anymore. But I think that might be the only difference. But it's clearly this guy is out of shape. But this match was not bad. You know, it was, a, it was an extremely solid match. Let's put it like that. And Rich Swan looked, actually looked strong. So it wasn't too bad. It was a pretty physical match, too. So it wasn't a bad match. It's just I don't like Eddie Edwards. <laughs> you know, I just I don't like this potato fuck. You know, it is what it is. Um, 
So they're going to have a triple threat match for the X Division title at Rebellion. Just random triple threat match. And we got to have triple threat matches to see who's going to get into that triple threat match. Makes, you know, hey, because that's how things work. You do a triple threat match to get into a triple threat match. Right? That's how everybody does it. So the th triple threat match was John Skyler, Ace Austin, and Crazy Steve. Uh, Ace Austin wins the match as uh, I think John Skyler was carrying around Crazy Steve in the position like a heart attack. And he hit him with the fold. So now Ace Austin is one of the three people with uh, one of the, well, there's two in the match now, Trey Miguel and Ace Austin. So next week we're going to have the third man is going to be involved in a triple threat match. Uh, looking at who they let go, and they kept John Skyler. They also kept Gujar. I have no idea who this guy. <laughs> I've seen this guy like four times. I have no idea who this guy is. Anyway, this Gujar guy it says he's not here for a handout. He's there to make the most of his opportunities. Then that other Indian dude who I don't remember, he's he showed up <clears throat> and he was talking to Gujar and said Gujar is not answering his phone. He's not talking to him. Why won't Gujar talk to him? And then Gujar tries to walk away. The other guy then grabs him by the arm. Gujar gets mad at him. Larry D then wanders back in. I don't know if Larry D works here or not. I'm not sure. Every time I turn around, Larry D has quit. Then Larry D keeps coming back. I don't know what's going on. Then he starts talking about Impact is in his hometown again, even though I think they're in Charlotte. You know, um, I think when the last time they said he was in his hometown, I think it was in Las Vegas. Anytime, anyway, he says that, oh, I can't come back to see the boys. I can't come back to talk. Impact had no room for me, but had room for these guys. So, uh, the not Gujar Indian dude got slapped by Larry D. Gujar then got in Larry D's face. They breathed very heavily at one another. Um, and you know, rubbed four heads for a little while. Then Larry D walked away. Then Gujar helped his non, his Indian, not himself, Indian friend, helped him to his feet. Then, um, the other guy said, oh, yes, this is why we need to stick together. This is why we need to be on the same side. And this feels like a setup. This feels like, you know, this guy asked Larry D to come in and make a big deal out of things to, to, to create a bonding moment between himself and Gujar. But I think we'll have to see. Uh, Eric Young cut a promo about power and control. So that's what the Good Brothers had. And they used Violent by Design to watch their back. But Violent by Design's plan was to watch their back, watch the Good Brothers back, until they were ready to take the tag team titles away from them. And that's exactly what they did. And was it fate, or was it all by design? Of course, if you say you had a plan, then it was by design, right? Okay, cool. Uh, a big eight-woman tag match, the Influence, the new Knockouts Tag Team Champions, versus, uh, well, the Influence and Savannah Evans and Tasha Steeles and the new Knockouts Women's Champion versus Mickey James, Chelsea Green, and the Inspiration. Uh, before the match, Madison Rain told Kayla with a K to stay away from the ring, and if you think that we need some help, newsflash, we don't. We don't need no help. We don't want you involved at all. Uh, of course, he was still involved, and they lost. Mickey James ended up pin pinning Tasha Steeles. That's a good way to make your champion look strong. You're going to beat her in the first match after the <laughs> she wins the title. Ah, it is what it is. Uh, Jonah says that PCO was called a monster, but he doesn't believe in monsters. Monsters believe in him and that he broke PCO's neck and proved that PCO is human. I was like, I don't need to see that again. We don't need to see more PCO. No, just, just, it's just me. I like Jonah. I think this is a good promo from him. I don't need to see any more PCO though. I just feel bad for him. Every time I see him and I just see him getting power bonds and taking all these crazy bumps, I just keep thinking like he's 60. I can't think of anything else other than, oh, cool character or nothing. I just be like, he's 60. What is he doing? You know, like, it's time to hang it up, bruh. Now the actual good part of the show, the Bullet Club slash Jay White and Alex Shelley segment. So the OG Bullet Club is back is what the, the Good Brothers have said. They said that, you know, it's a great feeling being back, but it's not a great feeling because they want their tag team championships and they're not going to have any fun tonight. They want the tag team titles. Switchblade Dre White got the uh, microphone and said that the Good Brothers will handle their business like he handled his and beat up on Alex Shelley. And then uh, he Alex Shelley came out and says that uh, he's not going to support Jay White, not going to too sweet Jay White. He says, you're always going to be Jamie White to me. The, the little kid who lived in my house when you had no money. Then he said that Jay White is the best and that he doesn't feel any... Uh
shame in losing to him because Jay White is now the best wrestler in the world. He says, look, I've been watching you. I saw you disrespect other people. I saw how you, what you did to get to the top. And I thought I was exempt from your disrespect. And when you refused to shake my hand, that showed me what kind of man you are. And Jay White said, look, this ain't personal. This is just business. And you don't know me. You knew me. You don't know the switchblade. You don't know King Switch. You don't know what I had to do to get to the top of this business. And then he ran down all his accolades and everything. Then Jay White, as usual, says that um, everything in wrestling happens because of him. And because he's the, the king of the Bullet Club and all this kind of stuff. Then Alex Shelley says, when you go over to New Japan, remind yourself that I helped train Okada. When you go over to AEW, remind yourself that I helped breed the Young Bucks. And he says, and then I also uh, helped you. He says, so my fingerprints are all over this business and you are here because of me. Then Chris Bay got involved and says, why are you even here? An intelligent man would know that it's six on one and that he would probably leave. Then Alex Shelley says, you should probably know that I'm never alone. This entered Chris Saban and they challenged uh, Jay White and Chris Bay to a tag team match to which Jay White accepted. So I like this. I, I liked all of this. You know, Jay White and Alex Shelley, they did a, it, they did kind of a slapdash beginning to this feud where they kind of, it was really thrown together, you know, where, uh, the two guys, it was just a match that was, that occurred on television, on a pay-per-view, but they built something from the match. So it wasn't like it was a complete, you know, nothing meant anything. So even though the match itself was like 20 minutes of athletics, and I think I said that in my review, hard to care about a match where there's no real storyline involved and it's just two great wrestlers great wrestling you know that's cool and all sometimes but you want more you know you want a little something and this is it you know they decided to use that match to can build the story and that was very very smart you know of course they've already had the match but now they're kind of building really building the feud you know so i like this you know this was this is very good i like that uh I like both positions. And that's really what I could tell. I really like a story is when both positions make sense. Jay White is like, you know, hey, look, I'm running this shit now. I'm the guy. I'm the man. You don't know me. You know, you knew me up to a point when I was broke. And I ain't had no money when I had when I was struggling to get opportunities. That's when you knew me. You know, I was a different person then. Now I've learned. I got different experiences. I'm a different person now. And Alex Shelley is like, OK. You may be a different person now, but you are who you are because of me. And a lot of other people are too. So you disrespecting me is some is some bullshit. And so I, I like that. I thought that was very good. The only other thing on this show that occurred was Deanna Perrazzo um, saying that she had no remorse for Chelsea Green and injuring Chelsea Green's wrist. Chelsea Green worked that match with a with a, <laughs> an arm brace on, by the way, because her wrist is fractured again. She has the most delicate wrists of all time. She's like olive oil from Popeye. Anyway, um, she said that she showed a distinct lack in judgment in showing mercy to Chelsea Green and that she break arms. That's what she does. And she will continue to do that. And anybody who accepts the chap chap challenge is running the same risk. This led Giselle Shaw to come out there and was immediately interrupted by Lady Frost. And then Deanna Parazzo says, look, it's two of y'all. I'm tired of y'all arguing. I will fight both of you. In a triple threat match. So I will defend both titles. Against both opponents. Next week. And that is that. So Deanna Perrazzo will be wrestling. Both Giselle Shaw and Lady Frost next week. Uh, who cares. Who cares really. <laughs> who cares. Alright so. Uh, the Jay White stuff was very good. The Anna No More stuff. Is not evolving. The way that I thought it would. Um. Uh, it's just all feeling like one big thing. It doesn't feel like they're constituent parts. Um, also, I don't know where Gresham went. I don't know where Riccoboni went. I don't know where, you know, why is Deanna Perrazzo not involved with that storyline? Because she has a Ring of Honor title. She should be involved with that storyline. Or at least they should be trying to recruit her, at least. You know, it, like, it would mean nothing for, like, Maria to just be like, oh, hey, Deanna, you know, you're Ring of Honor Women's Champion. You know the company's gone out of business. What do you think they're going to do with that title? They're going to take it from you, apparently, right? You know, what, what is that? Or she could go the opposite direction, 
tell Deanna that the title doesn't mean anything because Ring of Honor is dead. You know, like, you keep carrying around this Ring of Honor women's title. That title doesn't mean anything. The company is dead. You know, I don't know because Impact does the big block tapings. That, um, whether these set of tapings were done after Tony Khan bought it or before. If it's before, then on the next set of tapings, you have to mention that Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor and it's a different company. He's probably going to take that belt anyway. But I think that's a good storytelling device. If you have Honor No More there, they're all Ring of Honor wrestlers or whatever. They should be involved with Deanna Perazzo and probably trying to make her paranoid about her position as champion. Like that of uh, of that company of Ring of Honor. That would be fun. You know, um, Jonathan Gresham would be around to do that too. Or if you could bring in Bandito, that would be another good person to do. Like if you're a champion of that company, what does it mean to be a uh, Ring of Honor women's champion anymore? You know, the company is dead. You know, especially considering now that it's been sold to Tony Khan, it's not the same company anymore. You know, it's a good thing to do before, you know, Tony Khan really takes over. Because I think he's taken over Ring of Honor on Supercard of Honor. I think that's to be his first show as he produces himself. So, if you're going to do that story, it's best to do it now. You know, before he does something wild, like has Deanna Perazzo drop the belt to fucking Chris Statlander or some shit. Which he, which he probably would do. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> that's kind of that's the kind of shit he's into. Um, so I don't know, but I want, you know, something more from this, but this is a very wrestling heavy show and the wrestling was okay. Uh, even if I didn't really like the performers, it was still all right. So an okay show, not terrible. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace. Your skin tone, so why attach yourself and piggyback the wealth you didn't earn or lack yourself? I'm telling you to own up to your own success and failures. It's a reason why these sleeves.